All right, everybody, it's Friday, Cinco de Mayo. And uh, that's uh, the 5th of May, for those of you who don't, uh, habla espanol. <laughs> so, hey, man, oh, dig it. I got awesome hands. I did a flip. I'm going to actually keep that. I'm not going to re-record it. So, uh, what was I saying? Cinco de Mayo, heading to uh, St. Paul, Minneapolis, going to Las Vegas for a couple of days. Got to uh, head into the headquarters of... Uh, uh, one of the businesses I work for and work with to get a couple of deals wrapped up and closed. Really excited about that. Uh, but what I wanted to share with you today is that part of my morning routine, I have 36 different groups that I text every morning. Some of you who are listening might be recipients of those text messages. Um, over the years, I just found some uh, solace in uh, scripture and I would text someone every once in a while some scripture just trying to lift them up and one thing led to another and as more and more people learned of this practice of mine um, they asked if they could be added to the email or the text message list so it's not a group text I send out the same text message to 36 different groups so it takes about 15 or 20 minutes every morning to get the message out within each group there's anywhere from one person to four people so, I don't know, there's probably a total of 100 people within those 36 text messages. So, uh, it's really kind of cool because it helps people get their kick day start, their day kick started. And it helps me get my day kick started by just uh, bookending the day with something positive, you know, and uh, finishing a task early in the morning. Today, I was a little late getting it out. Today was a little bit of a change of pace. It wasn't scripture related, but it was more focused on the things that you've been through and why you're going through those things, right? So one of the things that uh, I focused on last night and prepped for this morning's um, shout out to everybody in these text messages is everything you've been through is ne was necessary for where God is taking you. Let me repeat that. It said everything you've been through up to this point has been necessary for where God is taking you. And it got to me to thinking, you know, when we were born, we just didn't know how to walk or speak or uh, control our uh, emotions, um, among other things. We had to take baby steps to get all those things done, right? So as a result, you know, God plants these seeds in your heart and your mind, uh, things that he wants you to do and wants us to act on. But it just doesn't happen overnight and just like a newborn baby they have to learn how to crawl before they walk they learn how to have to learn how to chew before they swallow right so all of these things are baby steps sometimes they fall and they get hurt or sometimes they put their hand on a burner or some crazy darn thing i don't know that's not quite a good analogy but um but there, there's pain involved and what babies learn very quickly is i'm not going to do that again right well, it's no different in our life. In order for God to prepare us for what he has in store, he has to take us through certain levels of understanding, learning, wisdom, patience, uh, suffering. Remember, his own son was no exception. His own son took the weight of the world on his shoulders, nailed himself to the cross, right? Or had himself nailed to the cross for our sins. So if the son of God is not exempt from pain and suffering, we sure as heck will not be. However, for the good of the will of God's direction for your life, he'll use all of that for, for, for his will towards your life, you know, the plan that he has outlined for you. So what I sent out this morning was really kind of apropos, you know, what you've been through and where you're going is what God, what God felt was necessary for, to prepare you for the path that you're going to be journeying on. So when trials and tribulations come your way, don't stress out about that stuff. I know it's easier said than done. I was guilty of that for many years. But you know what I do now? I just look at it and say, hey, man, that's just an obstacle. It's not a big deal. It was put there for some reason that I've got to overcome. But when you overcome and solve problems, wonderful things happen. You learn, you grow, you develop, you can make money. The bigger the problems you solve, the faster you grow, the faster you uh, uh, learn, and maybe even more money you make, right? So we're all faced with these things. It's just perspective. A mentor of mine told me once, you know who doesn't have problems? Dead people. Dead people don't have problems. That's the harsh, cruel reality of this life. So be thankful for your problems, all right? And understand that you've 
You've been on a journey that may very well have been an answer to a prayer from years ago, and God's taking you through this journey to prepare you for the answer, all right? He's preparing you for the blessing. So don't trip out and freak out about everything you're going through and try to pray yourself out of it when he's got you exactly where he needs you to be to answer your prayer, all right? All right, make it a great day. Go out there, be brave, be strong, and go get what's yours, and we'll see you next week.